Hi, I'm Chancy. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. Um, I was originally wearing a black shirt but like blended in with my bed frame so had to change that. Um, also like okay comment if you know me and am I this pale in person because it's kind of ridiculous. Anyway, um, today's video uh, okay, you obviously know what it's about. It's Disney advice, um, questions that I get. It's like a FAQ type of thing that I decided I wanted to do. The reason being is that I get a lot of questions. I'm sure people who have annual passes who go as much as I do or my friend Alyssa or whoever, um, cast members even, I don't know. We get a lot of questions, excuse me, a little burp there. Um, and what is extremely frustrating, this is just going to be a complete disclaimer because I already know I'm going to rant like nobody's business. And the thing is, is you ask me for, not you specifically, well maybe you, I don't know, whatever. People ask me for advice. And what frustrates me is when one, I don't get enough information or two, you argue with me about my advice that I'm giving you. I'm giving you my opinion. What I would do what I am suggesting um, so if you don't like it then don't use it but the other thing that frustrates me is like some people ask me for like in-depth advice questions upon questions upon questions and then not take it and it's just like a waste of time so I compiled a list of questions and I'm gonna go through them so one of the things that um, I get asked frequently is when is the best time to go? Are you talking season? Are you talking uh, for like what particular thing that they're doing? Um, like in other words, like what's coming up in 2020 or 2021 or whatever the case is. Are you talking about day, time of the day? Like I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you're asking. So I'm going to give you just like a, a couple of, or I guess just like one generic answer. If you are doing a day pass, um, meaning that you're buying a one day park hopper, a one day to Disneyland, but a one day to California Adventure, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting in there when the park opens. The reason being is that first two hours or so when the park is open, um, it's going to be mostly dead. You can get to those rides that you really want to go to. If you want to ride Indiana Jones and that's something that you absolutely need to do, then go at rope drop because you're going to get on that ride in 15 minutes or less if you're getting on there fast. Sometimes it might be a little bit longer if it's a really busy day, um, which we'll get into that later as to why it may be busy in the morning. But usually people with kids um, are eating breakfast at that time and they're not in a rush to do the rides. So you can go in and you can do those rides. And so I highly recommend doing rope drop. Um, in terms of season, uh, go during the off season. There's uh, plenty of websites out there that give you kind of like, um, it's a Disneyland like guest forecast. And what they do is they tell you when the best and most optimal days to go within a certain month are. Um, if you're going for those last two weeks of Christmas, so not of Christmas, but of December, um, it's going to be insane if you're going during summer. Most of the time it is insane. If you're going from February 28th to April 21st this year, it's going to be busy because of food and wine festival. Um, summer they have Mar or it's Marvel, but it's called Avengers Campus. They have that opening. That's going to be busy. They have the new Star Wars ride, Rise of the Resistance. It's creating some massive lines. So you just have to be mindful of the fact that like you are at Disneyland. It's going to be packed. It's just, that's just the fact of life. That's how it is. I can't, I mean, <laughs> there's nothing else to really say. Um, it just depends on what type of year you want to go on. If you want to go on the traditional um, Haunted Mansion or um, normal, I guess, normal, um, small world, then, you know, don't go 
during Halloween or Christmas time because um, Haunted Mansion is Haunted Mansion holiday from I think it's August, September to the end of the Christmas season because it's a Halloween and Christmas movie. So you're not going to get on the normal one. If you want to get on that one, then that is the perfect time to go. Definitely, I would say September would be the most optimal time for that. If you want to go on It's a Small World holiday, then definitely go when holiday starts, which is usually the beginning of November to the beginning of January. So it just really depends on what it is that you are trying to see. Um, if you're trying to avoid extremely hot temperatures, obviously go in winter. It does get very, very cold, so bring hat, gloves, the whole shebang. Um, but, you know, March, April, May is a good time to go for that. Um, something that I always recommend to people who are doing just a, a day there, going rope drop to midnight or whatever the case is, get a locker. Uh, bring extra clothes with you because the temperature does change and if you don't live in California then hi we have weird weather here um, it'll be freezing in the morning and scorching in the afternoon and then freezing again at night so it just kind of sucks to carry a jacket and all that with you seven dollars you can get a normal sized uh, locker you can put your sunscreen in there extra waters um, clothes and all that jazz just because it's easier than carrying all of that with you. Um, I do highly, highly recommend a locker, especially if you're there for a full day and you can just always stop and if you're buying stuff throughout the day, then you could just throw it in there. Whatever the case is, you have that. You can also bring your own food. So if you wanted to save a little bit extra money, bring your own snacks, bring your own lunch, things like that, that a lot of people just don't realize or they think that it's not allowed. Uh, bring a reusable water bottle because they have refill stations or you can also get like a free like cup of water from a lot of the restaurants and fill that up and you know there you go there's water fountains you can get it from there as well so that's something that I also highly recommend um if you're bringing a stroller be mindful to check the website they have restrictions now so you will be turned away by security um so take a look at those um, one thing that bothers me is when people ask me what I would recommend for small kids. Um, I worked with small kids for many, many years and I do know generally what they were like. However, you know your child. I don't. I don't. I mean, I might know your child, but I don't know your child that way. Is your kid an early bird? Does your kid require a nap? Does your kid require an exuberant amount of snacks? I don't know. Does your kid like, you know, roller, not roller coasters, but fast rides, heights, things like that? Are they gonna cry, are they gonna scream? Like, you know your kid, you have an idea of what your kid is gonna like. You can also, if they are of talking age, you can ask them what it is that they wanna do, what they wanna, you know, all that type of stuff. There's Disney Plus now, they can watch these movies, it'll make them maybe a little bit more excited for some of these rides, such as Peter Pan. Um, Snow White's doing renovations right now, but there's also Pinocchio, which might be a little frightening. Um, Alice in Wonderland, teacups, you have Dumbo, uh, you have Small World, which doesn't have a movie, but everyone should write it anyway. And then Toontown, like there's just so much to do. Definitely download the app, which we'll get into later. Um, but that's just something that I also recommend doing. Um, so, you know your kid, bring those snacks. And if you know your kid needs a nap, figure out what you're gonna do during that time. That is something that um, you wanna consider. I would suggest maybe going through Galaxy's Edge if you're a huge Star Wars fan because there are only two rides there. We'll get into that also. Um, so you just wanna go somewhere that it's easy for you to walk around. Um, I'm also gonna go over Galaxy's Edge a little bit more in depth later. I just want to get through my list. Um, bring wet ones, bring baby wipes. You're going to need them. Kids get sticky. Uh, Disneyland gets sticky. It's just a fact of life when there's so much sugar hanging out. Um, if you're going without kids, I would say when you walk into the park, go to the left. Um, the reason being is that's where all uh, most of the bigger rides are. Um, so you can hit Indiana Jones. You're gonna also make sure you do Jungle Cruise because that one is 
top notch. One of my favorites. Um, so, you know, Jungle Cruise, you have Pirates, you have Indiana Jones, you have Haunted Mansion, you can go to the island. Then if you go to the back corner, you can do Winnie the Pooh, you have Splash Mountain, you can, you know, walk down to Thunder Mountain. Um, so you kind of just hit all of that side. It's easier to hit that side than the other side, I guess, first. Um, and then you want to, what I would highly recommend, this is just me, I don't want to hear anybody complaining about it, I don't want to hear any differing opinions, I am giving you my opinion, okay? If you were going to Galaxy's Edge, there are three entrances. Two of them are on a walkway from Fantasyland or Frontierland. Um, and it's where like Big Thunder Ranch used to be and the goats and all of that and then there's one that takes you into where the first order is and then the other one I can't remember where it takes you in um, kind of in the middle I guess like by the marketplace or like a walkway so I recommend doing the third entrance which is over by Hungry Bear Hungry Bear is a restaurant and it's if you look on the map, you'll see where Hungry Bear is. There's a walkway and that's going to take you into the resistance side. Stay to the right when you're walking in because what I recommend doing is, and this might not look normal, but you'll see it if you look at the map. So you're going to walk in and, you know, there's Rise of the Resistance, there's Resistance Apparel, things like that. And if you keep walking, the marketplace will be right in front of you. Keep to the right and just keep going so that way you can kind of like loop around. And um, that's how Disney had us do it when they first opened the land. And I thought that it was great that they did that because you were able to see everything. You passed by the Droid Depot. You passed by Savvy's Workshop. You went by, um, you know, restrooms, which is a good thing to go by. Um, you went through the First Order area. You went by Oga's Cantina, the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. You went up the stairs to go by um, Launch Bay 7. Um, you, Launch Bay 7? Is that what it's called? Sorry if I'm wrong about that. I can't remember the name of it right now. I think that's it. Um, whatever. Uh, Ronto Roasters. And then there's like an antique shop right there. Um, like before Ronto Roasters. And then when you go past Ronto Roasters, you hit the marketplace. And then that's where you get like your Jedi gear, or whatever clothes that they wear. Um, you have the creature stall. You have the little toy shop. Like things like that. So then you really get to see all of it. Um... Someone had asked me, how much time do you need for Galaxy's Edge? Are you a big Star Wars fan? Are you not a big Star Wars fan? Do you care about making a, you know, like, are, what are you gonna do? Are you going to make a lightsaber? Cause you wanna give yourself, you know, 30 to 45 minutes to do that. Are you gonna make a droid? Cause you're gonna need another 30 minutes to do that. Are you going to be interested in seeing Oga's Cantina? Cause you're gonna need to give yourself 45 minutes for that. And then not only that, but then, the time to just walk through and kind of soak it all in. You're gonna need at the very least like an hour and a half to kind of just look at everything. That's at the very least. This, I'm talking like as someone who's not a huge Star Wars fan, that's what I did. Um, and then time to stand in line for the rides. If you're trying to get on Rise of the Resistance, what I recommend, what I did to do it, <laughs> what I did to do it, anyway, what I did to get on it, um, on the app, at you know, make sure you link all of your passes or tickets or whatever the case is get on the app um around 7 58 7 59 at at eight o'clock you need to watch the clock you refresh you go and you follow the steps and then it's honestly truly just luck of the draw um there's nothing that you can really do and that i've seen that will get you a higher boarding pass than others there are people who have arrived super early they get into the park first and they still aren't getting a good number i got number 26 when i went on um but i know other people who didn't and it's just it's really just luck of the draw it's how fast your internet connection is how fast you're going how when you get into that queue um so good luck make sure you're there you have to have to be scanned into the park before official park opening time. So the park actually lets you in about 30 to 45 minutes prior to park opening. Um, 
and you're able to just kind of stand there until eight o'clock and then at eight o'clock is when the queue officially opens um for you to get on it on the app and then within the first minute you just hear like everybody cheering it's really wild um so you also want to consider that and then make sure if you are making reservations for Oga's Cantina you're doing it at least two weeks in advance because those reservations do fill up quickly um they don't take walk-ins um Savvy's workshop you also need a reservation for the droid, droid depot you can walk in and do it um I do recommend doing the droid first um just because it does interact with the land um, so that's kind of cool because then like depending on if you put like a different personality chip or whatever which they can explain all of that to you um it will interact with the land as you're walking through which is really neat um okay i spent way too much time on that um must have foods churro done you need it i don't i mean it's uh churros are made from the same dough as funnel cakes um, and then just wrapped in, wrapped, rolled in cinnamon sugar. Everyone loves the pineapple Dole Whips. You can also do a Dole Whip float. Um, you can get those by the Enchanted Tiki Room. I do, however, recommend going over to Tropical Hideaway because they do have other flavors such as raspberry and orange. Um, if you're in California Adventure, then they have a lemon soft serve, which is exquisite. Um, highly recommend that. And then um a jack jack num num cookie if you're in california adventure because it's a must uh i also highly recommend a pickle because they're delicious so um food just depends on what it is if you're looking for like a good dinner plaza inn solid one love their fried chicken carnation cafe is great if you're looking for something a little bit more affordable um, Hungry Bear or Galactic Grill. Um, Galactic Grill also has a really good breakfast burrito in the morning. That's a pretty good size. Um, it's only like $8 or something like that. So that's uh, an option for you as well if you don't bring your own breakfast. Um, yeah, it just really depends on you and what you want to do. Uh, Food and Wine Festival is coming up, so I do highly recommend checking that out if you're able to. That's at California Adventure. It does require um it you know you can do a sip and saver pass where you get eight little tickets that you can use at any of them or you can just purchase them if you wanted to um but we always recommend that every year um california adventure worth it yes absolutely um it has a different vibe than disneyland it's a it's a different atmosphere um, I think it's more laid back and you have a lot more room for kids to run around. There's more options for them to run around. The only place at Disneyland that they can really do that is Toontown um, or if you go to like a secluded area or if you go to the island. Um, at California Adventure, they have like a whole jungle gym type of situation like where it's like rope. I don't even know what it is, like a walkway I guess, stairs, I don't know. Um, they can do all sorts of stuff and it's it's something fun for them to kind of get that extra energy out. There's even a secluded walkway that they can run down. Um, there's more open areas usually where the people stand for viewing for a world of color um, that they can kind of run around in. Um, it's all Pixar so you have the Inside Out ride, you have Monsters Inc, uh, Jesse's Carousel for older kids you can do the Incredicoaster which is amazing um goofy sky school you have the swings you have just like all sorts of goofy sky school will give you whiplash by the way <laughs> just a heads up um so you have all sorts of stuff little mermaid ride um soaring over the world i think they're bringing back soaring over california for a bit i'm not 100 percent on that so i'd have to look into that so they do have other options it's great i love the atmosphere it also is the only park that sells alcohol at Disneyland only sells it at Club 33 or Oga's Cantina. So if you want to get a little wasty pants, that's where you go. Um, not to mention, also completely forgot about this. I don't know why I didn't mention it. Um, two things, Guardians of the Galaxy, which is, it was formerly Tower of Terror and they changed it and I was very sad about it, but I'm okay with it now. Um, they're opening up Avengers Campus this summer, which I mentioned. And then there's Cars Land, which is just wonderful especially if you're lucky enough to be there when the sun is setting the lights go on and you get five and it's just top notch so yes california adventure is absolutely worth it 
Um, plus, you can take pictures with like Captain America, Spider Man, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, um, Black Panther. Sometimes, well, Thor and Loki used to be out. I don't know if they still are. But Hot Loki, where you at? Park Hopper, multi day tickets. What are we doing? Um, Depends on how much time you have. I recommend doing Disneyland for a full day, California Adventure for a full day, and then if you can, park copying and getting, you know, nailing whatever you didn't get done. Um, yeah, hotels. If you can, stay at the Disneyland hotels. If not, the hotels around there are absolutely amazing. The one that um, most, like, Disney influencers recommend or like mom bloggers, things like that, is the Howard Johnson because it's about, I think, a 10 minute walk. Um, so it's really close by. You, you can actually see the top of Matterhorn. Um, so, option for you. It stopped filming, which was rude. Anyway, um, fast passes. So you can get a fast pass when you get there. Uh, you have to go to the kiosk to do it. And then you have, I think, a two hour like period where you can't get anything. And it does tell you when you can get it again once you scan your thing. You can also do max pass. Is Max Fast worth it? Yes, if you're there for only a day. Um, or if your whole party has it. The what Max Pass is, the difference between Max Pass and Fast Pass is that Max Pass allows for you to do it from your phone. Um, instead of going to the actual ride to the kiosk to get that fast pass, you can just do it on your phone and um, sometimes if you refresh it enough you can get different times. Um, and you're allowed to select it however it does have the same time between when you can get one fast pass and another so don't think that because you have max pass you can just get unlimited fast passes it does still give you that time limit it just makes it a little bit easier if you're in line for space mountain or indiana jones or something or eating or whatever the case is um for you to get those fast passes rise of the resistance does not have a fast pass it only has a boarding group number which you get in the morning, first thing, and that's it. Once they are done, they are done. And they sometimes cap it. So uh, one of my coworkers had, I think, 112, and they stopped boarding at 108 or 4, something like 104 maybe. I don't know. But, like, somewhere around there. So they do cap it. If you have anything after, like, 82, then there's no guarantee that you're going to get on the ride. Um, so at this time, it does not have a fast pass. However, most of the other rides do. Um, I would say go through, maybe like on the app, go through what attractions they have and see which ones are most important to you and uh, try to nail those first. But also go with an open mind. Um, because like, stuff happens. You know, especially if you're on a rainy day, <laughs> as you probably saw, stuff happens. Are some of the rides too scary? Well, I don't know. Depends on you. I don't think they are. That's just me though. So, yeah, Snow White formerly, I don't know what the new situation is going to be, would have been a little frightening. So would Pinocchio. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, you go through hell at the end. Like, that might be frightening for some kids. I don't really know. Um, some kids might take it seriously that there are ghosts in Haunted Mansion. You know, um, maybe some kids are don't like, my sister doesn't like the drop feeling. She loves Splash Mountain, which is weird, but she hates the drop feeling. So she doesn't want to go on like the Incredicoaster. She's been fighting on that one. So she's going to eventually go on it, but she's building up her confidence, you know. Um, I just, everyone's different. So it really just depends. Um... Shows. Mickey's Magical Map. It's the only show that I willingly watch. Um, I used to love... It's tough to be a bug, but they took that out. But I'm fine with that because they're putting Spider-Man stuff there. So, uh, Other shows, i not a good person to ask that. Parades, I don't like them. Shows are okay. Definitely go to the Enchanted Tiki Room. You know, animatronic bird singing Tiki 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 Room is pretty fun. Um, can't believe I just did that. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, that's. Um, I love hearing the Dapper Dan sing on Main Street. Um, try to go take pictures with 
characters if you can. Figure out what your focus is going to be. That's basically what I would say. Um, other things to note. I already mentioned it. Um, do your research. Don't just rely on me or whoever to tell you what it is. Look at multiple things. Look at, you know, one of my favorite ones to look at is uh, Magical Kinda Mama on Instagram. She has a blog. Um, she's one of my favorites. You can also look at Patrick Dougal. Um, he's very informative about different things that are going on and different happenings. Uh, he's on YouTube. You can also find him on Instagram. Uh, you can always reach out to me. If I don't know the answer, I'll ask Alyssa and then we can figure it out. I don't know. But there's so many different things out there. You will figure it out. You will be fine. And you will have a great time because it is the happiest place on earth. Um, so anyway, I'm glad I did an angry round, which is good. So yeah, uh, next week's video will be a vlog. I actually filmed a little bit of it while I was getting ready um, to film this and I was wearing a black shirt and I'm just like blending and then like you just see like really pale arm. Um, that was cute. This double shirt is just not the business. Um, so plan is to just vlog and then that'll be out in two weeks. Um, yeah, that's all I got going on. So anyway, if you have any suggestions of things that you would like to see, uh, comment down below if you want to see more videos and please feel free to subscribe and do that notification stuff that everybody talks about. I don't know what it's for, but whatever. Um, you can always follow me on Instagram at take a chancy at Twitter, chancy fine. And that's it. All right. Well, until next time. Bye.